Begin the current out in the Sechtes Eivin Dav Mem. Begin six lines down the top of the Yamid. Where the Gemara continues the discussion from the previous stop at the top of this Amid regarding the prohibition of having benefit from the Malacha that a non Jew did. Hashir's co sponsor, Bakalzak and Mechesko, to any time, Dab Chaim, Krishna was joining us for today's stop. Something we've been discussing about is, as we mentioned, the Isra for a Jew to benefit from something that a non Jew brings from Arvid Tchum. The Halacha, we mentioned the previous Mishnah regarding Rosh Hashanah. Do we mention Rosh Hashanah? And also, do we mention that, hey, we're not sure today's Rosh Hashanah or tomorrow's Rosh Hashanah, and that we make a stipulation? The Gemara discusses, Ma'olim is man Rosh Hashanah in Kippur. What's Allah Do you mention Shechianu? Is there a chiv to say Shechianu on Rosh Hashanah in Kippur? Or would it only be on Shalash Regalim, and whether Shechianu must be said over a cup of wine? So, the key terms of concepts are Kadesh Yasa, which is if a Malacha is done for a Jew on Shabbos or Yom Tov, which is forbidden, they have to wait the amount of time that it could be done after Shabbos and Yom Tov so that they shouldn't have any benefit from that prohibited malacha. Also, the Mishra is the concern that if we let it, someone, let's say a child, to do something forbidden, even though now as a child he's permitted to do it, but he's going to get used to that custom, he's going to continue doing that even when he's an adult. That we had from the previous, we begin the current path. Six lines down at the top of the Yom Tov, Nenom and Aleph. We had mentioned the previous stuff, a case where the deer was trapped on the first day of Yom Rosh Hashanah and was shaft on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. So Rav Nachman and Rav Chizidi ate from the deer. Rav Sheshes did not eat from the deer. Rav Yaisi is because they understood that she, they, that they understood in Rav Yaisi that the two days of Chutzlar, of Shnei Goliath, is Shnei Kedush, is considered two different sanctities. So therefore, even though it's trapped on the first day, on the, you could eat on the second day, one of them, one of them is Yom Tov, one of them is not. Rav Sheshit did not eat from the day because he understood, as we had originally quoted a rice that sounded like that, that the Shnei Yom Tov, even Shal Goli, is like a Kedush Ha'afas, even over there, Rav is the most extreme and that austere that everything is going to be considered Kedush Ha'afas. Now, however, the Gemara probably proved that that's not the case, that actually everyone agrees, and especially according to the second version of the Gemara, everyone agrees that according to the two days of Yom Tov, Rosh Hashanah, of Shal Goli, as it's for sure considered as two Kedushas, Rather, Amr Bashi says, the Yom Alameimah, he says that it was actually a different story at all. It was actually, what happened was, it was brought from out of the Tchum, on that same day of Yom Tov. And the Machlekes was regarding how Bav Yisrael Yisrael Zed, being brought for the Resh Kalusa, so although the Malacha being brought from out of the Tchum for him is forbidden, but it's Mutl Yisrael Lach, it's going permitted for another Jew to go ahead and, and use. And that's why the Mark continues on that theme regarding Rav Sheshe still didn't want to eat from it because if it's brought for the Rosh Hashanah, it's brought for everyone, also include all the rabbis with the guests. And the other ones held that no, it's brought for him, it's going to be only forbidden for him. That's how Gemara continues on that theme regarding a malacham that's done for a Jew that is forbidden. Now, who lifted the dust of Mechuzah? There was a certain turnip that was brought to Mechuzah. Not like Rabba. Rabba went out, and Chazia the Chmishi saw that the turnips were a little bit wilting already. So Shara Rabba, the Mizan, and the Rabba permitted the Jews to buy the turnips from the non Jews. Who, who brought it on Yom Tov? Amar, he said, There is no malacha done today. It was for sure uprooted from the ground already yesterday because it's already wilted already. So, my Amar, what are you going to say? Oh, the malacha was that was brought from Abed Tchum. That's not a problem because Habab is Shalis Olzeh, whatever is brought for this Jew, Mutlach, Shalis Olacher, you're allowed to even feed it to another Jew. The ones that are the marketplace that they're bringing, they know the Jews don't come to the marketplace, they bring it for the non Jews. And therefore, since it was brought for the, even if it was brought for a Jew, a different Jew would be permitted. Here it was brought for the non Jews, for sure it's going to be permitted. Now, the thing is, keeping the Chaz of the Kamashi, but once he saw that the non Jews started bringing more, or the increasing the mice they started bringing, ah, he said, no, now for sure they know that the Jews are buying on Yom Tov, they for sure bring it for the Jews. And therefore, Asal, then he made it forbidden them, because now it's being brought for all the Jews, and therefore, it's a malacha, Nasa B'Shali Yisrael, being brought from Chosat Chum, and therefore, it's going to be forbidden. The Gemara continues with a, a similar uh, uh, halacha. Hana B'nei Kanana. There were these people that they would make, this was their profession, they would make the canopies for the grooms, and they would put myrtles over there. And the Gosel of who, as some of you saw, I don't know what Goyim, Asa B'Yam Now, there were non Jews. Who they were tearing out myrtles on the second day of Yom Tov. Now, La Orta Sharlu Ravina La Ruche De Malta. So right after Yom Tov, Ravina permitted people to smell it 
and use it as, as something to have benefit from right after Yom Tov, which is, we're talking about Yom Tov Sheni, which is rabbinic. So Amalei Lola Batech Levele Rabin says, why? Let the master make it forbidden. The people, they're not Tamaric scholars. They're going to come to the great Yom Tov Sheni. If you let them do it right after Yom Tov to have benefit from it, they're going to think that there's no problem about the malacha that was done on Yom Tov Sheni, and, and they're going to be disgraceful in, in Yom Tov Sheni. So Shmaz Kibur Rav Shmaya. Shmaya says, wait a second, time at the end of the Neitar, the reason because it's not the Neitar. Wow, the Neitar is showing me if the Neitar then would be permitted right after Yom Tov. But that's the halacha that you needed to be, the amount of time that the malacha could have been done, which there's a discussion in Rashi Tais exactly regarding how much time do you need to wait, but you have to wait that time. So, Azul Shailu Lumra, but they came to ask Rabba. Oh, he says, you're right, being Mechdeh you need to have that amount of time that you wait. It's no different than Yom Tavishin and Tavshemi. And Tavshemi has the same halacha that you're going to have to wait Mechdeh Shiyasu, and it's forbidden for everyone where the halacha that was done. Now, we're going to the halacha of the Mishnah. We, had, we were discussing our Mishnah regarding two days of Rosh Hashanah. We, because the Mishnah before that is talking about Rosh Hashanah, uh, Yom Tav and Shabbos regarding making two different Erevin. So our mission is spoke about making two different Erevin on the two days of Rosh Hashanah. Once we discussed Rosh Hashanah, so we got the discussion regarding the laws of Rosh Hashanah regarding Davnik. But they said, he says, Rosh Hashanah, so he said two things. First of all, you mentioned Rosh Chedesh, and also you say, you don't know which is the real day of Rosh Hashanah. You say, if it's today, let it be today, if it's tomorrow, and then when it's the second day of Rosh Hashanah, you say, if it's today, or if it's yesterday. Related to this, the Gemara brings Omer Rabbi, says, Kavinu be Ravuna. When we were by the Yeshiva of Huni Boylan, we had the following question. Ma'al haskish Rosh Chedesh Rosh Hashanah. What's Allah, do you mention Rosh Chedesh in the Rosh Hashanah Davani? What's the question? Kim nechaluk of Musaf, and since they have separate Musaf and Karbanis, because on Rosh Hashanah you bring the Musaf of Rosh Chedesh, and you bring the Musaf of Rosh Hashanah, like the Pasuk Balit Bukhav Tes, Moladu Lasa Chedesh, besides the oil that you bring every month, he also mean the I love Rosh Hashanah. So they're from here, that's the different Davening also, which Davening correlates to Adlaida. You're going to mention, as Yom Rosh Hashanah is there, Vizyam is there. You're going to mention Rosh Hashanah independently, just like by the Karban is bringing independently. I don't maybe know, Zikar and Echad. One remembers, by saying as Yom has Zikar and Azad, the Torah calls both them Zikar. Rosh Hashanah is called Zikar and Shur. Rosh Hashanah also says, why you look at the Zikar? So I look at the Mention Yom Zikar would be, would, you don't have to mention Rosh Hashanah. It's really included in Yom Zikar. So I'm Allah, and Rabbi Huna said to us, to Nisua, I didn't learn this in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yisrael, he said, I love Nehatei Pachulu, that if you go and down to the Amit, he says that, yeah, you mentioned Rish Chedesh, and also you don't, you're going to say, if it's today or if it's tomorrow. Now, it's such a, that the Chachamim were Veloi Haidulat. My love isn't when the Chacham are Veloi Haidulat, that they disagree with him. Us going on Lahaster, is going on regarding mentioning Rish Chedesh, where they don't agree that you mention Rosh Chedesh and Rosh Hashanah. So you see clearly that you're not going to mention Rosh Chedesh. And that says the Gemara, well, I know, Lahasnes. There were two halachas that Rav Chid, that, that, that Rav said mentioned. One of the halachas was, I don't know if today's Rosh Hashanah or tomorrow. So whichever one Hashem it's going to be, support us and, and, and strengthen us. That is what they disagree and say, no, you don't say, Im Hayyim Lamach. You just say, as Yom Zikar Nazem. And you don't specify. And the second day also. It's one of that halacha that they disagree, but could be regarding the mentioning Rish Chaydish, maybe that they actually do agree to that. So the Gemara Chanan is it's actually logical to say that they agree that you mention Rish Chaydish. Why? Because in the time of Brisa, we learned in the Brisa, it said, the Chen Rish Chaydish, the Chen Rish also would do, but Rish Chaydishim shall call Hashan Akulo. Every Rish Chaydish, throughout the whole year, not just Tishrei, every Rish Chaydish, it's always a doubt. You don't know, it's two days Rish Chaydish, you don't know whether did they make the new month on day 30, did they make it day 31. So he would say every Rish Chaydish, by the two days of Rish Chaydish, he would say if it's today, it was tomorrow. And the Lord, like, and the sages didn't agree yet. Now, says the Gemara, if you say that word they, is on the Hasnais, is on the stipulation, obviously that's why you know they didn't agree to him, you don't say if it's today, tomorrow. But if it's regarding the mentioning of Rish Chaydish, what does it mean? On Rish Chaydish, you're not mentioning Rish Chaydish? It, it, it's the same machlaikis, it, it's and obviously it's going lahas, and it's not lahaskir, because Rish Chaydish, besides Tishrei, every Rish Chaydish, of course, you mentioning Rish Chaydish. So the Gemara says, okay, fine, I hear what you're saying, but Be'elamai, but what do you want to say? You want to say lahasness, that, oh, they disagree regarding the stipulation, but then, lamalei lefluge betarati. 
Why do you need this machlekes for base and the chacham in two different places? Now Mishnah and the Brisa, it's the same machlekes then. It's the same halacha. Do you make a do you do you make a stipulation or not? That's the gemara. No, it's really that you need. Why? Yes, you need. Rosh Hashanah, had we only said in the Mishnah, we're going to Rosh Hashanah today, tomorrow, have me now, we're said, but how come Rabban Dole? That's Rabban Dole. You're going to say, no, you're not going to make a stipulation. Mishnah, because if you're going to make it like as if it, there's a doubt, that's a little zulu day. They're going to come to be disgraceful in the Kedusha of Rosh Hashanah. But when you say it just as soon as the Quran is there, without saying it today, tomorrow, they're going to presume it in one element of sanctity. Abba Rasha, Abba Shem Shakala Shon Nekul, Abba Rasha, with the Bryce, told him, Abba Rasha, Rish Chaydish in general, throughout the year, we allowed him Malacha, there's no real concern for Zilzal. In the Mighty Lord of I would say that they greeted Bryce, and that you would say in the terminology of it's not a stipulation, if it's today, tomorrow. Therefore, you have to say that too. No. So then, wait a second, why did you just say the Bryce's case? Says the Gemara, we in the Baha, have we only said the case of Rish Chaydish, Baha come Rabba Isa, maybe Abba Deir Abba Isa says that you make it tonight. Ach, but that of Rosh Hashanah, in my Lord Rabban, I would say, agrees with Rabban, that you're not going to make it tonight because it would be Zilzal. So you could have to say both of them, but again, it still sounds like that the Allah is going to be, that it's going to be one of the Machlekes was running tonight. They were running Haskal, or running mentioning that the Chama would agree that you mentioned Rish Chaydish in the Rosh Hashanah Dada. But the Gemara continues and asks on this opinion, Mesve. According to the one that's trying to say that the Machlekes was only regarding the tonight, or regarding Zikar and that other Halacha Rabbi said the Chama agreed, from the following price. Now, just important, just to introduce, regarding the Tefillah of Shemayna Esrei, so we usually have Shemayna Esrei brachas, really 19 brachas, but on Shabbos or Yom Tev, you have, you have uh, a total of seven brachas. You have the first three, which you always have, you always have the last three. You have Shvach and Haidah. And then in the middle, you have Kedusha Sayyayim. You have the sanctity of the day, which would be for seven brachas. On most of Rosh Hashanah, you have a total of nine brachas. You have the first three and the last three, which you always have. And you have the middle three of Machas, Zechinus, and Shaitz. Now, but what if, let's say, it's Shabbos Yom Tif, or let's say, it's Shabbos Rosh Hashanah? So that's where Abraisa begins. Rosh Hashanah Shechalis B'Shabbos. Let's say Rosh Hashanah falls out to be on Shabbos. So it's like this year, Shabbos Rosh Hashanah. What's the Allah? B'Shamah, they say, Mispalu Esen. You make ten brachas in Shemayin Esen. Why? Again, you have the first three and the last three. Then you have Shabbos as an independent bracha, and therefore that makes it seven. And you have then uh, the Kedusha Sayyim of Rosh Hashanah, which is including the Bracha of Malchus, as the Gemara talks about Rosh Hashanah. That makes eight. And you have Zechrein and Shreifus. So you have a total of ten Brachas, according to Bishamai, that you're going to say on Shabbos Rosh Hashanah. They say, no, it's only been Tasha. There's only been nine Brachas. Why? Because Shabbos and Yom Tov are included in one Bracha, and, and Yom Tov's Kedusha is mentioned with Malchus, which as we have it. So therefore, you're gonna put Shabbos with Yom Tov with Malchis, and then you're gonna end one big bracha Mekadosh Shabbos Yisrael B'Yom What's the That's separate brachas. So it's one of seven. Why is it? Yeah, it's gonna be nine. It's gonna be nine brachas. But according to Rishon, it's gonna be ten. That's that's what we're up to now. It says the Gemara of the Now, if it's true that you're telling me that on Rosh Hashanah you mentioned Rosh Chaydish. So therefore, according to Beis Shammai, who he says, every time you have a separate entity, you make me a separate bracha, just like Shabbos and Yom Tiv, Shabbos and Rosh Hashanah. He says, you're going to say a separate bracha for Shabbos. So then, achas esrin ba'ilei. So in this year, Shabbos Rosh Hashanah, shouldn't be just according to Beis Shammai, 10 brachas, it should be 11, because you should have a separate bracha for Rosh Just like he makes a separate bracha for Shabbos. Now, according to Beis so you put Shabbos together with Yom Tiv, so you put Rosh Chodesh in also. But the question is according to Bishama, if it's really true that you're mentioning Rish Chaydish, it should have its own bracha, so then it seems to be that you're not mentioning Rish Chaydish in Rosh Hashanah, not like what we're saying. So I think Mark continues on the base and says, no. I'm Rabbi Zeira, he says the alumnus over here. He says, the truth is, you do have to mention Rish Chaydish in Rosh Hashanah. But according to Bishama, Rish Chaydish will not get its own bracha. Now, it's not because when you mention Yem HaZikaren of Rosh Hashanah, that that's going to include Rish Chaydish. Because that would sound like, oh, when it's a Prince Rosh Hashanah, it's including Rosh Chaydish. No. The reason is because even when you have Shabbos Rosh Chaydish, and it's not Shabbos Rosh Hashanah, just Shabbos Rosh Chaydish, Rosh Chaydish would not require its own bracha. You would end the one bracha of Kedusha Shabbos, Mikadash Shabbos Yisrael Rosh Chaydish. So therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, also you're going to conclude, Mikadash Yisrael Rosh Chaydish. Now, wait a second. 
Although Meshama said when it's Shabbos Rosh Hashanah, you do need a separate bracha for each one, you're making a separate one for Rosh Hashanah and for Shabbos, but Rosh Chaydish Bisham would agree. Why? So now Rabbi Zayar comes to explain. Shani Rosh Chaydish Rosh Chaydish is different. Why is it different? Are there on Shabbos? Mitech Shekailil, since you include its bracha in the bracha of that day, and it doesn't get its own bracha. When? L'shachos va'arvis. Even on other Shabbos, when it's by Shachos and Meir, not most. There, most definitely, Shammai would agree, and it's obvious to them, that you would not require a separate bracha for Rish Chedesh. Why? Because the Rish Chedesh falls on the weekday. There's no separate bracha for Rish Chedesh by Shachos and Meir. You say, I'll be all right, by Ritzay. So therefore, when Rosh Chodesh falls on Shabbos too, even according to the one that's going to tell us later on, that by Shabbos, we don't mention Rosh Chodesh in Ritzei, you actually mention it in the bracha of Shabbos, but it's what's called Kailo. You're inclusive, it's inclusive, it's included in the bracha, but it's not going to get its own bracha. There's a few steps over here. But the point is, is that Rosh Chodesh, by Shabbos and Meir, in a weekday, you don't have its own bracha. And then on Shabbos, even if it's not going to be in Ritzayin Yalva Yavai, you'll mention in Ritzayin, but it will not get its own bracha. It's going to be part of the Mekadosh Shabbos. So therefore, Kalil Nami, the So therefore, according to Bishamah, but truthfully, according to him, by Musaf, he says everyone gets their own bracha, but he's going to agree that although during the weekday, Rosh Chodesh gets its own bracha, we make Musaf on Rosh Chodesh, here it's going to be included. Why is it going to be included and not have its own bracha? Because by Shachas, by the other tefillahs of the day, Shachas and Ma'irib, it's going to be included, it's not going to have its own bracha. So therefore, by most of two, it's also not going to have its own bracha. But regarding other Yom Tevim, where they do have, let's say, if a Yom falls on the weekday, by Ma'irib and Shachas, it's going to have its own bracha, that's where Bishamai disagrees and says, if it falls on the Shabbos, then each one's going to have to require its own bracha by all the tefillahs. That's why it's not difficult. Why, according to Bishamai, you're not going to have 11 brachas because Rishchidish does not require its own bracha by itself, even according to Bishamai. What bracha did it get by Shabbos? Who? Which one? Rishchidish? Rishchidish doesn't. Rishchidish, and that's the reason. No, during the week you say by Yalva, Yalva, by Ritzay. On Shabbos, we're going to see there is an opinion that says that you're not going to say by Yalva, Yalva. You'll say it in the, in the, in the Entzah bracha itself. In the Kedusha Sayyim, but even that opinion is going to say, you're not going to say it as its own bracha. It's what's called kaila. So since it doesn't get its own bracha, so even the Bible most of which technically during the week the Rish Chedesh gets its own bracha, we're not going to give it its own bracha. And that was the whole question. You were saying that everyone agrees in our Mishnah, Turb Deisa, that Rosh Hashanah, you mentioned Rish Chedesh. So wait a second, you mentioned Rish Chedesh, Bishama, who says you, you make a separate bracha for everything that's coming up, like you see Shabbos. And, and, and Rosh Hashanah and Shabbos, uh, every, every Yom Tov that you mentioned in some books. So why don't you say the same thing by with Rosh Chedesh and Rosh Hashanah? Say so, no, Rosh Chedesh is different. Rosh Chedesh, even Bisham would agree, there's a concept of Kailu, it, it's not its own significance, and therefore even by Moshe, which technically it should have its own, it doesn't have its own, because the rest of the Tfilas that day will not have its own, it's Kailu, so the Moshe is also going to have Kailu. But now the Gemara says, wait a second, but me, Islam, Bisham, Kailu, does Bisham even really hold this concept that you're talking about? about Kail, meaning that by the bracha of Musaf, of Rish Chaydish, that falls in Shabbos, that then you're going to put Rish Chaydish together with Shabbos? But by the time, in the Bryce, it says like this. Rish Chaydish, Chalis, Bishabbos, Shabbos, Rish Chaydish, as we call it. Bisham, Yom, and Mispal, Shmaina. Bisham says you can have eight brachas. We have having eight brachas because you have the first three and the last three, and you have one for Rish Chaydish and one for Shabbos, and that's by Musaf. So it says, no, you, you only do seven because you're putting Shabbos together with Rosh Hashanah. So says, the Gemara Kasha, most definitely that is a difficulty. And as Rashi follows through, obviously you see from here that since by other Shabbos, Bishana requires a separate bracha for Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah he's not requiring because if he did, he would require 11 brachas, not 10. Obviously the reason is because the Zikaran of Rosh Hashanah, by saying the is Zikaran, is Oyelamai does include Rosh Chayish, and therefore what we infer is that not only will you not, you're not going to be even Kailal Rosh Chayish, you're not even going to be mentioning Rosh Chayish. Because if you did, according to Rosh Hashanah, you would have had to have 11 brachas, and therefore actually, the Gemara seems to conclude that the Chacham and Bisigur Yerbeis, not just on the Tanai, but even on the Zikaran, we don't mention Rosh Chayish 
on Rosh Hashanah, because if we did, according to Bishamah, you have 11, and we see that you have only 10, because we see Bishamah does not hold the Kaya. And the whole Svar, why we saying that by Musa, by Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, you're not going to own Bracha, is only because you see Kaya regarding the other Tzvilas, but we see Bishamah does not hold Kaya, because you see on Rosh Hashanah, on Shabbos, he said you get eight Bracha, it's not just seven. So therefore the Gemara is concluding that, yeah, as we'll see later on, that uh, the Chachamah disagree with both Allah's. Now, says the Gemara, but Kail Atzma, this Allah of Kail itself, meaning, we had said, we had based our whole, Reb Zayr's whole opinion of interpretation was based on, that by Shachar Samayev, or Shchedish, the falls on Shabbos, Vir, we're not saying it's separate Bracha for Shchedish, we're going to include, we're not saying in Yalp Rabbi, we're going to include it in the Kedusha Sayyam of Shabbos, but that we said, they say it gets Kail, and the Rebbe Moshe also going to say Kail. And then from Bisham would agree it's not going to get its own bracha. There's a few different things. You might be, you might be thinking what, because you're so used to thinking how we say it, which we're going to actually quote right now. We generally say it in Yalav Yalavay, Shafras, Meir, maybe not Shafras. But the, the Gemara's assumption was that you're going to say it by Shafras and Meir in the Tefillah itself, in the Kedusha Siyam, when we say the Tefillah of Makadash and Shafras, you can see Rishkhan Shin over there, but it's going to be clear. And from the fact that the Gemara assumed that everyone agrees to that, even by Shammai, so that even by Musa, we're technically, it should have its own bracha, because during the week, it has its own bracha. Then we said, no, you're going to say kal for everything, therefore it doesn't get its own bracha. But now the Gemara is saying that actually that concept, which we actually don't rule like, is actually much like Tanoi. Tanoi, that there's a, there's a Tana that holds, that you're not even going to say kal, rather, you're going to say the bracha of Rishchidosh by Yal of Yavai in Ritzay, like you do during the weekday. But in the Birch Sayyim, uh, this is how we do, we pass like this halacha, and Rashi, there's a, a Rashi that goes through the Pesach and shows us like that. Um, but we don't mention in, 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 in Shabbos, even, even before Kaya. So although we had presumed as a leniency, we were saying that Rishchidosh is lesser than the rest, and you can do Kaya, it's not even Kaya. It, 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 that itself is not like Tanam. There are those who say you don't even say Kaya to Rishchidosh by Shabbos and The time I learned the price. Shabbos is called Yisbeir Shchedish. If Shabbos falls on Shchedish, this case we're talking about what's called Shabbos Shchedish. Oy b'chel v'shamayi, or similarly, falls on Chol Shamayi. Meaning, it's not a yom. Arab is Shabbos and Mechad, and Meir is Shabbos and Mechad. Mispal kedar kei Shabbat. You make a regular seven brachas. V'ayimei namar, where you put the, 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 this, this halach of Shchedish or Chol Shamayi? So it's a machlekes. But both of them are not saying, like we had said before. Either it's ba'a v'ayda, if you do it by a which is how we paskin. Or, but then it says, by duh, you do it in Maidr. And then, you didn't say Yal Biyavai. So, my Zimna says, you gotta go back, you gotta say Yal Biyavai. Now, Uber Musafin, by the Musaf, what you do is Maschal Bishal Shabbos. You start off, there you are gonna mention, there, there you will have Kail. Even the Tanakhama says, you don't say Kail by Rosh Chaydish, the Fault of Shabbos, or or Maid, Shabbos Chal Maid, and this is how we pass him, you're gonna say Yal Biyavai separately by Ritzay or by Maidim. But by Musaf, then you'll start saying Shabbos. You'll start by Tidlan, the Siyam HaManoi Chazet. But Messiah Bishal Shabbos, and you'll conclude with Shabbos. You'll only end with Kaddish Shabbos, nothing more. But by Kedusha Siyam Be'emtza. There, by Musaf, you will include Rish Chaydush or Kalosh in the middle of the bracha itself. But by Shabbos and Ma'ayat, what you see is that you're not even going to have it Kail. You're not going to have a bracha. You're not going to have it Kail even in the middle. Ah, that's the time that does not hold Kail by Shabbos and Ma'ayat. Now, how about some Achleikis? They say, Wherever you need to have seven brachas, meaning even if it's Shabbos and higher, Maschal Bishal Shabbos, meaning seven is because you, it's, a, it's a Shabbos, Yom Tev, we don't have Shemayin, Shemayin Asri brachas. You yeah? have the first three, the last three, and you have just one in the middle. Then Maschal Bishal Shabbos, you start with Shabbos, and the Sabbath Bishal Shabbos, you end with Shabbos, and then you see the same thing of the day, meaning of, let's say, Rish Chaydish, together with Shabbos, in the middle of bracha, even by Shabbos and Maya. So let's say you'll say a Siyam HaManayich HaZeh, this Siyam HaShachidosh HaZeh, or let's say it's a Yom Tiv, Chol HaShemayi, you'll say a Siyam HaShabbos HaZeh, a Siyam Chak HaPlaini HaZeh. But one thing we see is that this Tana holds, that you will say Kail, not like the uh, Rebbe Yaza and the Tamikam. But one thing we see is that, that it's a Machlekes. Do you say Kail on Rishchidosh? In Shabbos and Maya, which we had presumed before, was a leniency that by Rishchidosh, there was Kail by Shabbos Avos, so therefore we're going to say Kail by Musa. The Gemara says, even that, it might even be more lenient like that. It might not be, it might be even less chash. We were trying to say why Bishami is not saying uh, 11 brachas, because uh, Rishchidosh is less. Rishchidosh is not going to make its own bracha. And how do we know that? Because you, you say Kail by Shabbos Avos, so you're going to say Kail by Musa. Now the Gemara is saying, there are some who don't even hold the Kail. And that's actually as we pass, we don't say, 
Yalva Yalva. It runs Seyir Shchidish in the Bruch itself by Shachas and Naya. So, so it's much like Yisrael. So it says the Gemara Mahava. What's the conclusion? Do you mention Rish Chayish Rosh Hashanah or not? So Mavchis he says the Karen Echad Ari Lekam Lekam. This is how we paskin. We say just by saying Gemara is the Karen that already includes. We don't mention separately that of Rish Chayish already included. Machinu Merav is the Karen Echad Ari Lekam Lekam. Just mentioning Gemara is the Karen includes the the Zikaron of Rish Chayish too. So therefore it comes out again like we said that the Chum disagrees with based on both points. You don't say Im Hayoyim Im Lemachor or Im Hayoyim Im Emesh. And also, you're not going to mention Rish Chaydish in the Tefillah of Rish Hashem. Now, another statement from Amar Rabba that he said, I mean, just like before that we said that he wanted to know, do you mention Rish Chaydish in Rish Hashem? It was Rabba saying that we had this question by, by the Yishiv Avuna. So, another related halacha that Rabba had said, we asked when we by the Yishiv Avuna, he boiled in the following question. Again, another Yon of the Yom over here. What's the halacha do you say, Zman, do you say Shechiyano or Rish Hashem in Kippur? What's the question? So the Gemara explains. Kimin the Zman, the Zman Lassi, since this comes once a year, so I'm you're going to say it, like Shachiyon or something that, that comes once a year. Like the Gemara, maybe, no, Kimin the Lake of Rukala, Rishonah, and Kippur, not called a regal, it's not called a Yom to be that way, it's only Shalash of Om, so Lamrin, we're not going to say it. So the Gemara says, La Havi Yadi, Rafunah did not have, they didn't have the answer. Now, Kiyasub, Rabbi Yudah, when he came to Yeshiva, Rabbi Yudah, Omar, he says, Ha, Ana, me, Akar, Chadutah. On a new squash, you know, when I see a new squash once a year, not in this month. Even for that, I say Shachiyana. So, for sure, you're going to say Shachiyana or Shachiyana Kippur. Uh, not only he said, no, Shushli can be by He said, the permissibility to that wasn't my question. Of course, you could. My question was regarding is there an obligation? My, what's Salah? So, Mali said to me, oh, Rabbi Shemal Dantabai, they both say, you don't say Shachiyana, only on the Shachiyana, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. On that, the Gemara asks in the following price. Asi says in Kehalas, ten chelik l'shiva, give a portion to seven, become l'shmoyin and also to eight. What does this mean? Shabbat Yom Zemi says, shiva, the seven, eight was ayin meberishis. These are the seven days of creation, which the choices of them all is Shabbos, that's chelik l'shiva, which that portion is for the seventh day. Shmoyin, what's eight? Eluches mimila, this refers to the this eight days of circumcision, meaning from the eight days, what's the choice of them all is the eighth day. That's one interpretation. Shua, I mean, that's the one we're going to go with. He says, Shiva means Elo Shibi make Pesach. This refers to all the seven days of Pesach. That you have to give a portion to all of the seven days. Shikma is going to explain what, what are you apportioning to every day of, of Pesach. And what? Shemayna? Elo Shemayna Me'achad. This refers to the eight days of Sukkot. All those eight days. That's what seven and eight is. Now, Shem Begam, but the Pesach says, and Begam with Shemayna. Why is that Begam? What's also? The Rav is a Tzeres for Rishonah and Yom That's coming to include Shavuot, Rishonah, and Yom Kippur. Says the Gemara, my love, what are we talking about over here? Isn't it telling us, Lezman, that what are we including is going to have the Halacha, Shechayanu, is going to be also Rishonah and Yom Kippur. And it's like, my love, no, this is the Malah Bracha. This is regarding you. You make a Bracha on the day, Mekadosh Yisrael, Vazman, and nothing to do with Shechayanu. And the Gemara says, it's actually logical to say this, because the Isak, the Dedek Lezman, if you were entertained to say that what we're talking about over here is too much shechianu, zman kol shem meyikah, how, how can you say that all the seven days of Pesach or all the eight days of Sukkot that what we're including over here is shechianu? You don't make a shechianu on every day; it's the first day. How can you say it's all seven days? So zima no halikash. That's not difficult because dilem of archeidna. It could be that all seven days or all eight days. How's that possible? It means to say. If you didn't make a bracha on the first day, you could still make the next day and the day after that and the day after that, and never could be Shachiyanu. Right. That's regarding, right. That's regarding Hal, regarding Kurbanis, but regarding Shachiyanu, yeah, good point. Right, but what are you going to do with the seven days of Pasch? Right, and the other. So that's what I'm saying. But let's say regarding seven and eight. So the regarding the seven days of Pesach, that's and and, and that's actually what the Gemara is saying. Kol shiva me zman kol shiva meikah. That on all the seven days of Pesach, that how, how could that be? So the Gemara says that's not, that's not difficult because could, it could be. It means to say if you didn't do it on that first day, you could continue making shachiyana. So the, the, the Gemara concludes the question. So we come up and so even so, as Rashi explains, the Gemara is going back. 
The Gemara wanted to say, Hachanam Mistab, but the Gemara wanted to say, yeah, it's logical, there's not talking about Shechayanu, because there was too much Shechayanu, then what do you mean? How could you have Shechayanu all seven days? And that the Gemara says, what do you mean? Of course you have Shechayanu all seven days. If you don't say today, you'll say tomorrow or the day after that. And that the Gemara says, no, you can't say that, because being a case. What do you mean? You need a cup of wine to say the brach of Shechayanu on. And as Rashi explains, most people, or many people, the first day they'll have a cup of wine. The rest of the days, most people don't have. So how would you even interpret to say that's referring to Shechayanu? Oh, if you didn't make today, you make tomorrow, you make tomorrow, you make tomorrow. Who has a cup of wine seven, five days into Yom Tov? Again, that's what in Tamari times, that there was assumed that you couldn't say that Tzatak Valach like that because people wouldn't have a cup of wine. And says the Gemara, and if you're going to say that, oh, that, you don't, that people are not going to have a cup of wine and still you're saying that it refers to Shechayanu, that is man, then Lema Seyil Rav Nachman. Because Rav Nachman, he says, man, Rav Nachman, Gashog. He says, yeah, Shechayanu, you can make it in the marketplace. You don't need a cup of wine. Obviously, it has to, has to support one of the two approaches. Either it's not too much Shechayanu, and if it is, like you're trying to answer, then it has to support Rav Nachman, because who has a cup of wine Five days in the end. It says the Mahalik Kasha. It's not difficult. Take a look, guys. I'm really happy to have a cup of wine. But it is going on Shechiyano, and we're not supporting Ibn Nachman. And therefore, he didn't refute the interpretation that maybe it is talking about Shechiyano. It says the Mahalik Kasha. Okay, you want to tell me that you make a Shechiyano and Roshan and Kippurim? But Hatenach et says Roshan, meaning from the word Vagan, you included Shibuis, Roshan, and Yom Kippur. So I understand that you're including for Shechiyano. At Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah, because you could say that you're going to make the Shachiyon on a cup of wine. Because you're not, you don't want to support Rav Nachman yet, who says that you could even make Shachiyon without a cup of wine. So, but the problem is, what do you do with Yom Kippur? How are you going to make a Shachiyon? Obviously, you have to support Rav Nachman. Because on a cup of wine, Yom Kippur, how are you going to make a Shachiyon on a cup of wine according to, uh, uh, without, with, uh, uh, on Yom Kippur, as the Gemara explains? The Gemara goes through a few different options, and shows it's not an option. If you can make a shechiyano, after you make a cup, bracha and a cup of wine, you make a bracha and you're going to drink a cup of wine. Keep in mind, once you make shechiyano, kibol leva asale. You made a shechiyano, you already accepted kedusha from kippur. You're ready for them to drink because the most dominant of your Bible, the Rav, he says nevedelis. One time it happened that it was cloudy. Rav went and davened the Shabbos davening when it was still Friday. So the Yimri said to Rav. Did you stop doing malacha when you ready were makabel shabbos? Don't lay. It says, yeah, in Bedilna, of course I stopped doing malacha because the fact that I did kabbalah shabbos. Once you do kabbalah shabbos, it's already shabbos. So in Rosh, once you make a shachiyano, it's already a kippur. So, so you can't drink it. Oh, so what are you going to say? Live with a level inchay. Go. Who cares? Make a bracha and leave it. No, I'm a varv tzach shiitim. If you make a bracha, you have to taste it. Okay, the says, okay, let's really inuka. Why don't you give it to a child to drink it? After you made the bracha, because Rashi explains a very important halacha. This time we say that a kaisha bracha, you have to be toying, you have to make the, you have to taste it. It's not specifically the one who made the bracha has to taste it. The truth is, even someone else could drink it. Because the reason is that it's, it shouldn't be disgraceful for a kaisha bracha that a person is not having any benefit from it right after he makes the bracha, where that the bracha of Bayi should be unnecessary. But once, once someone else tasted, it, so it's going to be okay. And, and therefore, for that reason, the Gemara is saying, okay, so give it to a child. The child's not drinking in the Kippur. So the Gemara, no. Less selfless like Ravacha. We don't rule like Ravacha, which Rashi says it doesn't know where this Ravacha is. Tasty does bring the source of this Ravacha. But the point is, is one thing is, is that we hold Dim Asul and Nisruch. We're concerned that if you're going to give the child every Yom Kippur, Tati puts on his Kittel, Mach the Shachiyano, and says, and Baruch will hear, he drinks the wine. Every Yom Kippur, Baruch will drinks the wine. So he's, even once he becomes an adult, he's going to get so used to doing this custom, he's going to continue drinking a cup of wine every time he gets pregnant when he becomes an adult. So then, that's not an option. So it says, Gemma, my havala. So what's the conclusion? Do you have to make a shakhi on the Rosh Hashanah in or not? So the Gemma should do Rabbanah, the, the rabbi sent, the Rabbi Yemir Sadat, the Rabbi Yemir the elder, Kamed Rachizda, the Mali Yemir the Rosh Hashanah on Erev Rosh Hashanah. Amalek, they said to him, Zil Chazi Hecha Avik of the Go see how he does. And time on, then come tell us <laughs> what's the Allah. Kichazi, when the Chizda saw of Yiva, coming to him, Amalei sent him the following words. He says, Del Yul Retiva. Whoever picks up a moist piece of wood, which is not fit for itself, because it, you can't use it as, as firewood because it's moist, must be Rafsali Baduchte. Must be that it's soft in his place. Meaning, you obviously know that you need the place itself because you don't need the wood itself. Because you're not picking up enough. So essentially he was saying, you didn't come in for nothing. 
Why are you coming over here? Like you picked up and you came over here, what are you here for? But read it as an A, actually cost the camera, they brought him a cup of wine, Kaddish in a Kiddish, Rosh Hashanah Vamazman, and he said, Shechiyon. It says, Gemar Belchaz Alachaz, Aim Zman Bereshon Mikipurim, you make a Shechiyon of Bereshon Mikipurim, and Belchaz Azman, Aim Rafa Bereshon Alachaz, you make Shechiyon, even in the marketplace, in other words, you don't need a cup of wine, and then that answers the question that regarding Yom Kippurim, that yeah, you make Shechiyon of Bereshon Yom Kippur, and even though you're not going to, how are you going to drink a cup of wine? You don't make the cup, right, exactly, you don't make the cup of wine, uh, you make it even like a. Drink the wine, and then you're makabal and say shechiyon. Can't because that no, this, then you no know, the shechiyon has to be on the cup of wine. If I can't, the bigger shail is in the boyfriend agafin. How could you ever entertain not drinking it? Isn't that a birchas and nenen? So there's a great alum disregarding the boyfriend agafin, but that's in the it's 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 not a not a birchas and nenen type. It's a it's a it's a part of the birchas and mitzvahs. Point is is that it has to be in the cup of wine. That's what the gemara says. You can't do that because once you make the shechiyon, that's. You're making it under a cup of wine. It's not just to drink, drink a cup of wine. The whole point of the Shafiyana, according to that opinion, has to be under Kirsh of Racha. You drank a dirty pogrom. So therefore, we're saying, yeah, you don't need to have a cup of wine. Some ideas we spoke about today's uh, daf and even daf men. He said something that comes from out of the tchum. So it's permitted for a different Jew. For sure, if let's say it's brought for a non-Jew. And that's what was the case of the turnip that Rabbi permitted people to go ahead and take from that turnip. Well, once he saw that they started bringing, especially for the Jews, huh, that's already being brought from Allah. But he saw that he said you can't, you can't buy anymore from the non-Jews. Now, regarding even Yom Tov Shein, the second day of Yom Tov, where the Malachi was done for a Yisrael, there also says that you need what's called the so after you have to wait the amount of time that it takes for the Malachi to be done. Then we went back to explain the Allah of the Mishnah. He said from the regarding the Tfilah Rosh Hashanah. Now, Related to that halacha that he says, you say Rosh Chodesh, and you have to say you're not sure if today, tomorrow, you say that. We had the question: Do you mention Rosh Chodesh or Rosh Hashanah? On the one hand, it has chalik from its masafim, therefore you'll mention it independently. On the other hand, it's zikar and echad elikan. It's called they're both called zikar, and therefore Yom Zikar when you call Rosh Chodesh too. <coughs> now, I the Chum we see explicitly they do disagree in the Mishnah of Daisa. It's possible that that was only on one of the halachas of stipulation but not on the halacha zikar. Maybe that they agree that you would mention Rosh Chedesh. And this, that we brought a b'raisam, that we said by every single Rosh Chedesh, that they disagree, that we have to tell you that even over there, that there's not really so much of a concern of a zilzal, because it's Rosh Chedesh, no malacha, it would say hayyayim ha'emesh. So it could be that the machlik is only regarding stipulation. They disagree with Rosh Hashanah, and in Rosh Chedesh they disagree. They say, yeah, even over there, there's not such a zilzal, that you don't say in hayyayim ha'emesh. But it could be regarding the zikaron of 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 of, of Rosh Chodesh. You mentioned Rosh Hashanah. Now, if that's the case, it comes out that the zikaron of Rosh Chodesh and Rosh Hashanah, according to the Shama, if you tell me Rosh Chodesh is mentioned independently, it should have been eleven brachas, not just ten, because the Shama is of the opinion that you always mention independently for Shabbos, Yom Tov. Each one gets its own bracha. And that Gemara says no. Rosh Chodesh is different. Why is Rosh Chodesh different? Because since we see it's already more lax regarding the law of Kail, when, when, when the Shabbos Rosh Chayvish, you're going to have by Shachar's and Mayr, you're going to only include it, it's not going to have its own bracha. And the reason is because even during the weekday, it doesn't have its own bracha. So therefore, on Shabbos, even though we're going to upgrade it, it's only going to be in Kail. So Musaf also, where even though during the weekday, really Rosh Chayvish gets its own bracha, also then Musaf on Rosh Hashanah should get its own bracha too. No, since we're saying Kail and the other Tvilas, by Shachar's and Mayr, we can say Kail also. By Musa. But the Gemara said, no, that's difficult. And the reason that is, is because Bishamah does not hold of that. Because by this exact case of Rosh Chedesh and Shabbos, Bishamah says, you make eight brachas. Why eight? Why not seven? There's the first three, the last three, and the middle one, which is Shabbos, because Rosh Chedesh is getting its own bracha. And you don't say koil, and therefore it will have its own bracha. And then the Gemara actually concluded from that that obviously you see that it must be that the Chachanim hold not like Reb Daisa, even Halacha. Of zikaron, rather it's zikaron echad that you mentioned. That's oil lekan to lekan, because if it was two zikrenes, then Bishalu would have said that you have eleven brachas on this year, Rosh Hashanah Shachalis B'Shabbos, and he only says ten brachas. Then we said we pointed out this idea parenthetically once we mentioned the idea of kail that Rosh Chodesh on Shabbos is only mentioned in kail that actually even that is not necessarily even the case, which is actually as we rule. Kail itself, by Shabbos and Mayim, Rosh Chodesh Shabbos and Shabbos, it's machlik samayim. There is a Tana that even Kail you're not going to do. Rather, you're going to have Yahweh Yahweh in Ritzay as you do during the week, which is as we do. 
on Shabbos, for Shredish, by Shabbos and Ayah, we don't even do Kail to say that, oh, Musa will also do Kail, which we do Kail by Musa. But we don't do the Kail by Shabbos and Ayah, we actually just do it as we do during the weekday. And the Gemara concludes, like we said, Zechan, Yechad, Elikan, Elikan, that there are abundant this week or Desa on both of them. Then we have the Grani Gizman, which is Shechiyon, the Yusei, where should we keep going? So the, the, the question is, on the one hand, it comes from, you know, once a year, so that you would say Shechiyon, on the other hand, it's not a regal. So the Gemara says, yeah, for sure you're allowed to, because even seeing a new turnip, you can make a Shechiyon. But regarding the obligation, now we have a Machlikis, and, but most definitely, there is going to be a distinct bracha, of Makati Shashal Ba'azman and Rishon Kippur, and the question was regarding, and that's a machlek is regarding to say Shachiyon or not. Now, but then we said, wait a second, but you can't have a cup to make the Zman on Yom Kippur, because you can't drink it because you're able to makabal the Kedush Yom Kippur, which you have to fast. You can't also just leave it because someone makes a bracha, you have to taste it. And you can't give it to the child because the Muslim is going to come because you're doing this. So as we said, that's not a problem because Shachiyon, you could say even in the Shuk, even without a cup of wine, and therefore that's the Allah that we make Shekhyanu, and it does not need a cup of wine, you just make a Shekhyanu. Thank you to any time for hosting us.